गंगा तरंग रमणी जटा कलाप गौरी निरंतर विभूषित भागम शिव इन समाधि has been the personification of yoga for thousands of years all the symbols shown here represent the philosophy of yoga shiva is our pure detached consciousness and this is the primal nature of sankhya the philosophy of yoga this image of adi yogi blissfully living in the himalayan caves may not inspire the modern man Perhaps this image will inspire him more. The physical notion of health has made us ignorant about the rasa of self-realization. Today the meaning of anand is material pleasure. America is a land of material pleasure. India was also once the land of a pleasurable life. Perhaps ancient India had achieved sensory pleasure far greater than in America. The country that looks poor today was once the richest land of the world. Even western scholars came to this conclusion of India's material affluence on the basis of economic parameters. But for Indians, purusharth, meaningful endeavors was the goal of human pursuit, not material affluence. When purusharth is complete, vairagya, a detachment from the world, emerges from within. This vairagya is the greatest wealth. In intense vairagya, realization of self is attained, and that is yoga. It is the supreme power. With this power of yoga, India never allowed the essence of her core to diminish, even in the worst of times. But countless countries in the world have disappeared in the whirlwind of time. साधन धाम मोक्ष कर द्वारा पाई न जेही पर लोक साला साधन धाम मोक्ष कर द्वारा पाई न जेही पर लोक साला सिविलाइजेशंस हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड लॉस्ट इन टाइम टुडे द पीपल ऑफ मेनी लैंड्स know very little about their ancestors this is the indian civilization despite internal wars and outside invasions the majority of indians today are living in the same tradition of their age old vedic and harappan cultures Universal consciousness desired to create sansara, the world. I, from one, become many. The creative desire form of universal consciousness is Brahma. Brahma ran after his desire to create sansara. The non-dual form of blissful consciousness is Adi Yogi Shiva. Shiva wanted to kill Brahma, the creator. with an arrow to stop the creation of sansara but the process of creation began before the arrow could hit him it missed its target by one moment the arrow of time missed by a moment and time was born the pulsation of that primordial event still resonates in our consciousness history is always present in our spiritual being we are continuously generating desire by seeding it with our labor we are creating sansara the root cause of suffering is both desire and sansara but in creation there is also rasa the emotive feelings of life creation has followed the blissful taal and rhythms of shiva the rigveda says rudra the fierce form of shiva is agni or fire Shiva had earlier wanted to kill Brahma the creator but since the creation had already begun Shiva's rudra form transformed into agni to protect sansara 
Agni is the energy of sansara. Because of Agni, there is motion, there is existence, there is bhog, yog, and rasa. In the end, Agni engulfs all. In dissolution, the sansara partakes in the rasa of the Tandav dance of Adi Yogi Shiva. In the end, all merges into the non-dual Adi Yogi. The complete dissolution is nothing but his samadhi. Ganga Taranga Ramani Jata Kalapam Gauri Nidantar Vibhushita Bhaam Bhaagam This Pashupati, Lord of Beasts, is sitting in the same asana in which King Yudhishthir used to sit for Abhishekam, Puja and his bath. The continuity of this asana can be found throughout historical times. The Nasagra or the Shambhavi Mudra in which this yogi is sitting continues to be depicted in sculptures and literature. These deer under the asana of yogis has been shown like this over the ages. Who else can symbolize the mind better than the flighty deer? Controlling the mind is tougher than holding air in a fist. But the yogis disciplined it and made it dance on their fingertips. Today, integrity and honesty in Indian marriages are taken for granted. But was it like this at the beginning of civilization? In those early times, when instinctive behavior was not moderated by intellectual wisdom, bringing integrity into relationships may have been a difficult task. But some ancient Indians lived a life of self-control and became exemplars for generations. When thousands of generations emulated them, it may have been ingrained into the natural behavior of Indians. What would have happened if there was no defined dignity in relationships? We would have procreated on this planet like animals, but without the creation of a civilization and Sanskriti. There would not have been knowledge and science, no idea of liberation or moksha. Human civilization is based on the institution of marriage. But this was not enough for Indian civilization. The roots of Indian married life are deep in dharma and truth. And the reason for this is yoga. The purpose of marriage is not limited to producing children. Our consciousness has divided itself into two to realize itself through dialogue. The scriptures are full of dialogues between Shiva and Parvati. Through dialogue, they realize the self and unite into one. Therefore, Indian marriage is not seen as a contract of self-evolution. It is a sanskar, a spiritual culture, a culture of self-evolution. The supreme personifications of this culture had descended on India on Mount Kailash, which is not in India now. Seated high above the world on Kailash, the married life of Adi Yogi Shiva and Parvati gave marriage the purity of the Himalayas and the detachment of the skies. Keeping that inspiration in their hearts, Ram and Sita lived in this world to reach the pinnacle of married life. Purity and detachment while being in sansara is even more challenging. Therefore Shiva and Parvati also worship Ram and Sita. Who is superior is not known, but as long as these two couples remain in the hearts of Indians as their ideals, this civilization will live harmoniously. Bharat is not just a physical entity consisting of land. 
It is a conscious life force to be awakened like the Kundalini. In our body, the Kundalini resides here. Through the practice of yoga or tapas, she ascends from here. On reaching there, she completes her sadhana practice. Yogis have sung beautiful songs of their longing and union. These hymns describe the geography of Bharat. It says that the expanse of Bharat is from Kanyakumari to the origin of the Ganga. Here, a Kumari is immersed in tapasya, penance. Her goal is to unite with Adi Yogi, Shiva. In this metaphor of Shiva Parvati, the flow of vital prana or energy between the two ends of the land is shown. In this lies the Kundalini of Yoga. तन राम का मंदिर साधु भाई काया राम का मंदिर अरे इना मंदिर की शोभा प्यारी इना मंदिर की शोभा प्यारी शोभा जब है सुंदर साधु भाई तन राम का मंदिर We find its indication in the temple Indication here means linga Smoke is the indication or the linga of fire. The way smoke is the linga of fire, the same way the cosmos is the linga of Brahma. There are three realities of the cosmos. There is a beginning and there is a dissolution of the cosmos. In between, there is a state of preservation. The geometrical form through which these three realities are understood is called the linga. This cuboid represents the creator, Brahma. Emerging from the top of this cuboid is a cylindrical form. This is the preserver, Vishnu. His creative presence in the cosmos is understood in the eight, 16, 32, and 64 facets of color, the arts. But in the end, this beautiful world dissolves into formlessness. The last end part represents Mahakal, the end of time. Through continuous Abhishekam with water, we try to slow down the process of destruction. O Shambho, let there be no untimely death. Creation, preservation, and dissolution. These three forces could not have created the world if there was no Shakti, the power to hold them together. She is the yoni, womb of the world. There are some references in the Puranas where linga and yoni are associated with the procreative parts of the human body. Nature in the human body and the sculptor in the idol both have taken this form from the core of creation. There is no darkness of animalistic lust in the primordial core. The conscious energy there is radiantly luminous. The Linga Purana says that Linga is Jyoti, Param Jyoti. The body is a mini cosmos. The Muladhar of the cosmos is described in the form of Jyotir Linga. And the same is described for our Muladhar. Here, the primordial energy lies in the form of Kundalini. The upward movement of this energy is blissfully celebrated by the yogis and householders celebrate it in procreation. Karma 
is a devta here, known as Kamdev. Before the arrival of intolerant religions in India, there were temples of Kamdev all over the country. Young men and women used to go there for worship and celebration. The same celebration later turned into the festival of colors, Holi. This world is but a play of the consciousness. Therefore, the Ved says that the 16 colors, forms of art of the Creator, is holding the cosmos. There is a discipline to experience the world through colors. And its purpose is liberation. For this discipline, the Vedic Rishis created a treatise called Natya Shastra. I believe that Natya Shastra is the first time with Rigved. There are the same things in Rigved. There are the same things in the Yagya. There are the same things in the Yagya. तो जैसे ही परफॉर्मेंस आता है उसके बारे में शास्त्र भी साथ ही साथ आ जाता है कि कैसे पुरोहित यहाँ खड़ा होगा जो सोम खरीदने वाला वो यहाँ खड़ा होगा वो इस तरह से बोलेगा वो यज्ञ के बीच में एक नाटक वो खड़ा करते हैं उसका मैनुअल है ब्राह्मण ग्रंथों में कि वो ऐसे ऐसे कहेंगे इस दिशा में देखेंगे इस एवं परिक्रमा करेंगे ये सारी जो क्रिया है वो नाटकीय है और उसके लिए एक एक मैनुअल तैयार किया जा रहा है तो नाट्यशास्त्र तो कई हज़ार साल पहले ऋग्वेद के समय से ही चल पड़ा अब जो हम कह रहे हैं बात की वो ज्ञान की एक धारा है मौखिक परंपरा में है उसके सारे निर्देश उनको कोई फिर संकलित करता है उनका डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करता है तो संविधा बन जाती है तो एक नटसूत्र में एक संविधा बनी जिसके कि लेखक भी शिलाली कहे गए और शिलाली मूलतः वैदिक पुरोहित है जो वेद में यज्ञ कराने वाले पुरोहित हैं तो शिलाली ने उस वैदिक यज्ञ की प्रक्रिया में जो नाटक होते हुए देखे थे उन उनके हिसाब से एक नटसूत्र को ही लिखा फिर कोई आदि भरत हैं वृद्ध भरत हैं फिर भरत मुनि आते हैं और भी कई आचार्य हैं जो कि नाट्यशास्त्र और उसकी परंपरा में उल्लिखित होते हैं On its completion, he offered it to the devtas, who refused to receive it. They said, "We cannot hold this natya because we cannot perform the penance and meditation necessary for it." Only a yogi can hold it. So Adi Yogi Shiva accepted and was called Natraj. Natya Shastra, in a way, is a treatise of yoga. A yogi sees the drama of the world within himself. Shiva Sutra, a treatise of yoga, says, "For a yogi, the actor who plays in the drama of the cosmos is his own self. The stage in this cosmic dance is nothing but the inner being, Antaratma. The spectator of this cosmic dance." is one's own cognitive and sense organs ha natya ka prayojan bharat muni ne jo bataya ki log jo sansar ke sukhi aur dukhi hain apne apne dukhon mein doobe hue hain thake haare hain jeevan ke prapanchon se ghabraye hue hain unko rahat dene ke liye ye ye ek ek panchwa ved avishkrit kiya ja raha hai khas taur se actors ke manual ke roop mein natya shastra multa likha gaya unke liye pura shastra ek एक एक सर्वांगीण ग्रंथ है जो हमारे एस्थेटिक्स का संगीत का अभिनय का और भी जितनी कलाएं हो सकती हैं नृत्य कला विशेष रूप से और इतना इतना बड़ा ग्रंथ इतना विशाल का व्यवस्थित ग्रंथ जिसमें कि हमारा सारा चिंतन 
और सारी जो प्रायोगिक परंपरा है उसको लेकर के और एक साइंटिफिक डिस्कोर्स बनाया गया हो अन्य किसी देश में इस तरह का कोई ग्रंथ इतना प्राचीन नहीं लिखा गया A music composer must have the knowledge of poetry. A dancer must have the knowledge both of poetry and music. But an actor must know the rasas of poetry, music and dance. The art of acting can give freedom from the bondages of life. Hence liberation is at the feet of Natraj. In fact, the whole universe is dancing in the form of Natraj. Chola Bronze Natraj, which the English colonial English had no understanding of whatsoever, Kurt would look at this and said, "I call it a multi-armed monstrosity, impossible, it's a monstrosity, We're making a classic mistake, confusing art with realism. Art has nothing to do with realism. I can take a five-dollar camera, these days even just my my cell phone, and take a worthless." photograph of you or you or anybody here it would be worth nothing it's not a work of art the goal of art is to capture the spirit or essence of something what we call rasa evoke a specific mood or sentiment in the viewer's brain how you go from the object the external world to the brain and evoke rasa and nobody thinks in the brain that's a misconception evokes rasa god knows where but you you brain using the brain as as a, as a vehicle to to resonate to to this attribute if you call rasa and uh, bird would completely miss the point of the natraja the metaphorical nuances people of wax eloquent about this i'm not an art historian but you know people like uh, zimmer anand kumar swami most recently nagar swami who's written admirably on 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 shiva you know reading it brings you brings tears to your eyes there's a connoisseurship of of, of great art and shiva natraja of course you know people, bird would just saw a circle and then holding this man standing there with multiple legs and 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 feet and arms with fire and you couldn't make no sense of it but if you understand the the poetry and the allegory but even visually it works beautifully because there's poise and balance you know he's raising one leg and one leg is half bent his poise and then his eyes are tranquil the sense of peace and tranquility but in the midst of all the agitation of the universe because the fire the ring of fire the dance evokes the frenzy and agitation of dance the phenomenon of the universe which are always in a constant state of agitation agitation of molecules and and cells in your body the flame in one hand evoking the idea of destruction the fire of destruction on the other hand the tambour is is a rhythm of creation and and being born and creation and destruction balance each other out so this perfect balance conceptually and also literally is standing in a balanced pose but the hair is flying off in different directions so there is this centrifugal energy so there is this agitation and motion at the same time there is peace and tranquility in the midst of all this agitation the central truth of god something immortal and and uni- unity one this the artist has conveyed brilliantly in that how the, how the guy thought of this only through divine inspiration once so to speak to have conceived of such a such an entity just, to me is astonishing and then if we can go on and on like that and you know natraja is there's a demon below his left foot is crushing this demon this demon is the demon of, of ignorance illusion maya what is this ignorance ignorance that all of us scientists and indeed non scientists suffer from which is there's this brief appearance there's this events going on in the world and i appear briefly inspect the world from where i am and i'm gone it's called death what the chola artist trying to tell you through the natraja is no you are not an aloof spectator you're part of this great dance of shiva so there is no birth there is no death you're part of the eternal continuous cycle of creation and destruction enlightenment and give up the maya the illusion that you are aloof and you are different from the rest of the cosmos you're part of the cosmic dance lose your fear abhaya so so all of this is conveyed by that bronze and this guy looks at it and says he's got multiple arms and legs he could have been wide gone to a museum in 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 europe and looked at angels in renaissance painting and said this is a monstrosity because human beings don't sprout wings and in fact i can tell you as a medical person that that people sprouting an additional leg can happen you see it in 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 older teratology literature anatomical literature 
human beings sprouting wings is an absurdity. It never happens. It can't happen. So that's more of a monstrosity, an angel, than, than a, <laughs> right? But this irony is, of course, lost on these guys. So there's, there's dozens of examples, and, and it, it, it's very important to realize this, that, that our culture is, 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 has this rich, um, harmonious resonance between different aspects of culture, which is quite unique, I think.